Here, do it. Do it. Yes, it is. Welcome back, everyone, to Searching for Faith. If you're new here, I'm Tracy. This is my channel that I created to create some accountability for myself as I follow, as I go along in this spiritual journey to discover not only what I believe, but also my why. And I hope this can be a safe, non-judgmental zone for all of you who are in similar places in your life um, or just want an honest place to reflect on Christianity and religion. Um, so, some of what we do is going to be Bible study tool kind of related, and some of it is going to be more hot topics and um, my experiences um, with more toxic parts of Christianity. Um, and yeah, just kind of leave it open so that we can have honest conversations. So please comment below whenever you have similar experiences or questions or just want to talk through things that you've experienced as well um, or things that we have in common or don't have in common. So um, just be respectful in the comments. That's all I ask. So today <laughs> we are going to be talking about the harp and bowl method of worship. Um, the pros and cons and dangers of it and why it actually caused me and my husband to initially walk away from our home church. So stay tuned. Okay guys, and this is Poe. Um, He's in the room with me. My husband's still working. It's the end of the day on a Friday. I hope you all are doing wonderful. I've had a very stressful week myself, but it's Friday afternoon and things are looking up and I'm feeling so much better. Have you guys ever had such intense stress that you literally feel sick? That's how I felt all week. Like every time I eat, I feel nauseous. Um, so I've really, really been struggling with anxiety and the stress this week. Um, but, uh, Things are looking up. It's Friday afternoon. I got through the stressful thing I was worried about this week. And it's the weekend. And it's beautiful here in Georgia. It is the 2nd of February, but high 60s outside. So that's nice. Especially since two weeks ago, it was in literally like single digits, right? But <laughs> So I'm enjoying this faux spring weather. I'm not going to get enjoy it too much because I know that it's going to change fast. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So, first things first, what is harp and bowl worship? Okay, so harp and bowl worship is actually a style of worship that was created, I guess is the right word, um, developed, I don't know what word do you use for that kind of thing, um, by IHOP Casey. Um, and no, I do not mean the International House of Pancakes. <laughs> I mean, the Inter House, International House of Prayer, Kansas City. It was originally started by the International House of Prayer in Kansas City, um, which was formed by Mike Bickle. I don't know if you've heard his name before. Um, Casey has been, if, I hope Casey has been around for a while. Um, I know they've been around since the uh at least the early 2000s maybe earlier than that i would have to read about like their like history on their website i have info about their harp and bowl method up on my ipad um i'm not sure i wonder let's see let's go to let's see if there's like a history let's see i hop kc when did you start this is just info about what they are and what they do. And there's a history of the prayer movement. All right, so let's see. I mean, it says that the prophetic movement in KC started in the 1970s and 80s. Um, but then I think IHOP themselves have been around around 25 years. Um, so I think they were like, when I was in my early 20s, they were a relatively new organization. Um, so I first it, had experiences with them because my I had friends and family 
who at church got me into them. And I know I went out to their, like, I think national conference, maybe it was. We all drove out to Kansas City from Atlanta. Um, it was a very long drive. Um, but we went to their conference there, um, which was at, I think the center, like where the International House of Prayer is. And essentially what the International House of Prayer is, and I will link their website below so you can read all about them if you're curious, is that they are 24 seven prayer. So they pray literally without ceasing. So they have, um, like, uh, shifts set up like kind of like a job so like if you volunteer there I actually considered briefly in my early 20s before I was married actually I considered like volunteering because you can do like internships and stuff at IHOP um so I actually considered doing like an internship like doing like a like a gap year I guess after college before I started in the workforce and while I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life at the time I thought I wanted to be a missionary there was just a lot going on in my life then um but I considered doing an internship with them um but they basically have shifts so and they have a usually a worship band um and they have different forms of worship throughout the day but it is always praying um, so the whole point is that at their center, there's prayer without ceasing. Um, and they, they go by a very early church, um, as well as, um, if you follow, I think the verses that they use, so I'm not telling you anything crazy. Um, they say that it's all based in scripture. So they use the example of, uh, when the singers took shifts day and night to minister to God around the Ark of the Covenant, uh, 288 singers and 4,000 musicians hired by David served the Lord as their full-time occupation. And that comes from 1 Corinthians 6, 31 through 33, 15, 16 through 22, 23, 4 through 6, and 25 verse 7 of 1 Chronicles. Um, and then they also reference um, in Acts 15 that James linked the Gentiles receiving salvation with the rebuilding of David's tabernacle and said it would lead to the gospel spreading to the ends of the earth, that the rest of man mankind may seek the Lord in Acts 15, 1 through 17. Even to this day, millions are coming to Christ worldwide. And then they reference Revelation 5, 8. Now, when Jesus had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they're saying, they say that in this vision, John sees the heavenly worship as Jesus takes the scroll, which will unleash the seven seals, eventually leading to his return to rule the earth. Throughout scripture, the theme, the theme is consistent. Worship and prayer together are powerful, influential, and part of God's plan to glorify his name and to bring many souls to him. So they base what they do in those scriptures, and that's where they get the terms harp and bowl from. They actually have several different, like, forms of worship. Um, and so uh, basically there are times when they're literally just, just having, like, background music, and there are people present in the room continually worshiping do you want to get down buddy whoa there you go uh continually worshiping um i actually there are centers for the international house of prayer all over the world now and i am pretty sure there's still one in atlanta there was one when i was in my early 20s and i highly recommend like if you're in like a major city that has an international house of prayer like um center or uh i don't even know what you call it uh but uh chapter <laughs> i don't really know what you call it um but if you have an international house of prayer center like in your home um city uh it is a really nice place like if you want a place to go to kind of separate yourself from the rest of the world and be able to like fully focus on God. It's a great setting, like if you choose one of their, I, I'm gonna look it up. So we're, I'm gonna like probably pause this video and come back to it. Okay, so they have more than one prayer room in KC. I know, I mean, at the time the Atlanta one only had one, um, but essentially they are praying and worshiping 24 seven like together. Um, day and night, open to the public so people can come in and participate. Um, 
It's designed to reflect the Tabernacle of David from 1 Chronicles 9.33 and 22 through 24. It is a place where they never cease worshiping the Lord and interesting for our world. Each 24-hour period is divided into 12 two-hour prayer sessions, each led by a full worship team. Um, so, and then they have two kinds of uh, sessions. Um, they have intercession sessions and they have worship with the word, which is more of a prayer format. I really liked going to the worship with the word sessions because they were more calm and it was just like calming wor worship in the background. And then every once in a while, somebody would like come up and like share a word or share a scripture or um, a, you know, reflection that they have, but it's mostly just like calming space where people are in the room constantly praying. Um, so it's really a good place to like do your Bible study, do your journaling, um, and just feel like you can like really like uh, disconnect from the world and focus in on God. Uh, and then the other type that they have is intercession sessions, and these are more upbeat worship usually. This is where they do spontaneous worship, well, which we'll get to more in a second. Um, and this is where uh, they have an open mic where people can come up and share prophetic words. Um, there is usually a person that's in charge of filtering. So like if you feel a word from God, then you go up to the person that's like in charge of the microphone and you say, I'm hearing this from God. And then they are supposed to use their gift of discernment to discern whether or not it's appropriate for you to share and if they discern that it is then you share it into the microphone um so those are like the two kinds of sessions like i said i preferred when i went not like i said it's been a while since i used to go to these sessions i preferred going to the prayer um the worship with the word um because it was more focused on scripture people would read scripture into the microphone and they would just play really calming like worship music in the background and it was just like a place where you could just dwell in the presence of God and just focus, if that makes any sense. Um, so those were the sessions that I really liked going to. So that's kind of like a background of what IHOP and KC and where Harp and Bowl came from. So I had a church that I was attending um, right before I got married and then me and my husband attended it together the first few years that we were married. It was a church plant non-denominational church. Um, we were uh, evangelical, charismatic kind of church. Um, and we did harp and bowl worship. Um, so I feel like the pros to harp and bowl worship are one that I genuinely, at least when I was taking part in it, especially in the IHOP setting. Um, when I was taking part as a worshiper in, the, well, everybody's a worshiper, but as like a more of a spectator, I guess, like a person in the audience, um, that I genuinely had moments where I felt like I broke through the heavens and was literally in God's presence and like sitting at his feet worshiping him. Like there were moments where I felt like I was right there and God was right there and he was like there, that the Holy Spirit like came down and we were like, in the presence of God, you know, like that's, there were moments where it felt like that. Um, the other good thing about it is that, especially if you're a very creatively minded person and you're part of the worship team, um, a lot of beautiful songs can come out of harp and bowl worship. Um, and there's some songs that like literally were created spontaneously, by IHOP, there is a girl called Misty Edwards, um, who I think made an album, maybe more than one, I'm not sure. Um, but she actually would create, like she was she was a songwriter, and so she would come up like with the most beautiful, uh, spontaneous worship lyrics that felt like songs. And we literally, like I remember I, when I was at IHOP in KC, at the conference like writing down some of the songs that she just spontaneously came up with and we sang some of those back at church everything jesus i want you more than anything more than everything jesus 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 
You're the one that I run to, Jesus, Jesus. You're the one I belong to, Jesus, Jesus. You're the one that I run to, Jesus, Jesus. You're the one I belong to, I want you. More than anything, more than everything, Jesus, I want you. More than anything, more than everything, Jesus, I want you. More than anything, more than everything, Jesus, I want you. More than anything, more than everything, Jesus. Those were the spontaneous lyrics that were sung by Misty Edwards at IHOP back in the early 2000s. And I wrote them down and I remembered them and it literally became a song that we sang at church. Like, almost every Sunday. Like it was a very go-to like, and I will say that those lyrics kind of saved me because like if I didn't have a special word or lyric to be able to sing, I could go to that. Um, <laughs> and also like my go-to would just be like, Jesus, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, okay, so. I looked it up and Misty Edwards is still at IHOP. She is a senior leader of the International House of Prayer and has stayed there for 24 years. What's funny is that she was like super, super intense. And I remember hearing this story and I can't remember who told me the story, but it came from Mike Bickle, who was in charge of, the, of IHOP. And he one time told Misty to chill. Like he was like, Basically, she was spending like all of her time fasting and praying and singing and like it was just like nonstop. Like she didn't take a break. Um, and Michael Bickle himself was like, Misty, get out of this building, go take a break, go see a movie, chill out. Like he essentially had to tell her, you're going too intense, girl. Take a break. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, but yeah, she's still there. So um, this is one thing I haven't shared much about myself, but I am a singer. I grew up doing voice, private voice, chorus, um, uh, competed, all of that, and then sang on the worship team for, I don't know, probably a good, like, decade of my life. Um, when we left this particular church, I stopped singing on worship teams and haven't really sang on a worship team in a while, um, but... Uh, we did sing some of some of those songs like in ours um, so I feel like those are the pros is that there is a lot of um, and if you're more of like a person that doesn't like you know structure it is very like freeing in some ways um, but there were a lot of I felt like there were way more cons than pros a lot more negatives and there are a lot of like toxic dangerous parts about harp and bowl worship um so we'll get more into those um so as one thing i guess as a person who was on the worship team in a harp and bowl session um i felt a lot of anxiety about it so essentially when you're doing a harp and bowl session um, somebody, you usually sing a song, like any song. It can be, you know, Lord, I lift your name on high, whatever. It can be any song, uh, that you play in the band. I'm doing a faux guitar right now, but you know what I'm saying? Like the worship leaders may be playing guitar and they sing a song. And then after that particular song is done, you usually continue with that chord progression from that particular song and you keep it like super simple, like a very simple, easy to sing along with chord progression. And then the singers are supposed to feel inspired <laughs> or feel God's, you know, spiritual inspiration to sing spontaneously to God. Um, and there were moments where I genuinely felt like I heard something and sang. But there were other times where I literally just stood there waiting for somebody else to say something um, because I felt so much anxiety. And uh, me and my husband were both on the worship band. My husband plays guitar and I sing. And just like, that's the big one. Like the amount of anxiety I felt over the pressure 
to sing something spontaneously to God. Um, and it wasn't about God anymore. It was about me and my performance, about me and my ability to come up with something unique and creative, something that people could sing along with, something that someone would want to continue to sing, like make note of that. Oh, that was a good one, Tracy. Let's keep singing that one on another Sunday. Like it was about me and not about God. Um, and I had a lot, a lot, a lot of anxiety and a lot of performance anxiety. And I was just like, freeze up um in worship and it became less about worshiping god and more about my performance um the other danger with it is that it is very emotionally driven so i think i've said in other videos that me and my husband have kind of tried to distance ourselves from emotionalism as a whole um because we saw a lot of emotionalism in that charismatic church and other charismatic churches that we were visiting or had connections with at the time. Um, so it really plays on people's emotions. People get really, really worked up and have like outward signs. And I can do another video on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and what the churches I was members of, churches that I, I took part in, what their belief with the baptism of the Holy Spirit was. But we were very big on showing outward signs of the Spirit overflowing within you. So when the Holy Spirit's filling you up and you overflow to the brim and this overflow manifests itself in some way. And we were expected to show that. And there was a lot of kind of like mob mentality or um, peer pressure. There's probably another word for that that I'm, I'm forgetting, but where you get yourself worked up because of the setting that you're in. Um, and you are less focused on God and more on the show. And you've probably seen the show, like I've gone to too many contemporary churches where you've got like, you know, fog machines and like light shows and stuff. And I'm like, are we putting on a concert or are we worshiping God? So it was nice in our church that it was more stripped down, you know, cause we we're a smaller church, but it still felt very showy a lot of times. I felt like a lot of the outward signs that people would show during these spontaneous worship sessions was, uh, like I said, very showy, very about me and not about God. And it didn't always feel like it was coming from God. It felt very artificial at times. Like it was just for show, to show off to take part, to feel like you're a part of, of the group, whatever. Um, the third danger was the open mic. Now, like I said, uh, at IHOP, they had a person who was in charge of the microphone and that person was known to have the gift of discernment, which I don't know if it's an actual gift in the Bible. I have to look it up and then cut to me, tell you whether it is or not. Um, but that is considered in a lot of charismatic churches, especially churches that believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that the gift of discernment is a gift from the Holy Spirit. So in IHOP, the person in charge of the microphone would have that gift of, of discernment. And like I said, a person would go up to them and be like, God gave me this word, this prophetic word, or this reflection, or I read this verse and I feel like God's telling me that everybody needs to hear this or whatever, or I had this dream or this vision, whatever, it'd be that kind of thing. And they tell the person in charge of the microphone and then they would discern whether it's really from God or not and then give the person access or not give them access to the microphone to share with the group at large. Um, and technically we were supposed to have a person like that, but usually the people that were in charge of it didn't actually use their gift of discernment if they had one and just let anybody like and it got to the point where people would just go up to the mic without even talking to the person that was in charge of the mic like so there were rules but we never talked about those rules we never reminded people of the rules and there, there were literally times where people would walk in off the street that nobody knew and just start talking nonsense like i remember one time like a lady came in and started like touching people and like hugging people and just like doing things that were inappropriate. And so it's just like, and that was the scary thing is that when you have an open mic with no, no like filter, no control over it, 
Like anybody could just walk up and say whatever the crap they want, whether it's from God or not. And it got really disorderly and really, really out of hand. And there was no filter. So there were a lot of words that were being spoken without any follow through. So like maybe somebody shares a vision that doesn't make any sense and there's nobody there to explain it. Or somebody shares a prophecy that's very outlandish and you're like, that cannot be from God. Or somebody shares, if you're in this kind of church and we were, a, uh, a message in tongues, but nobody was there to translate the tongues. Um, which if you go by that early church um, uh, form of worship, then if, a, a, if something is spoken in tongues, there has to be a translation. So there has to be somebody with the gift of interpreting tongues. Um, if you go by, like I said, like literally by what like is in that those early church verses. Um, so, and this church I went to, you know, went by that uh, style, like a uh, style is the wrong word. They bought into, I just feel like that's the wrong word too. They, the church I was in followed that form of worship based on like, you know, that literal interpretation of things that happened during the early church days. Uh, so it just got really dangerous and there were things being said in that open mic that I knew weren't from God. Um, so it got really out of hand and there was nobody reining it in. And it got to the point where I felt like worship was no longer about God and all about the people. So like I said, it was very showy, people doing and acting a certain way to show off. Um, it was very emotional driven. Um, there were a lot of words being spoken that I knew couldn't have been from God and I didn't think were appropriate to say in church. The worship style itself was very, very anxiety inducing for me as a person on the worship team. And there was no plan to like rein it in. Um, and so all of those things combined and a few other reasons also, but the Harp and Bowl was like a big, big, big factor for us and why we chose to leave that church. And for a few years after that, we went to a very, very traditional church that was like hymns, like what we're doing now. Um, but then I got to a point where I missed contemporary worship and wanted to find a contemporary church again. Uh, but like after that experience with the Harp and Bowl worship, we got to a point where we were like, we need a break. <laughs> um, and so we went to a very traditional church with primarily hymns uh, for a good long while after that experience. Uh, but yeah, so that is the harp and bowl method of worship. And I'm not saying, like I said, that I feel like IHOP, when you go to IHOP, like they are more in control of it. Um, they have like a system and you have to follow it. Like I said, they have that filter with the person that's in charge of the microphone that's supposed to be discerning things. Um, so I'm not going to say anything negative necessarily about IHOP. I think the fact that they have this mission to have continual prayer without ceasing is a really beautiful thing. And I am fully, you know, in support of that mission that they have. And like I said, if you want a place to get away to, to disconnect from the world and focus in on God, I really recommend like those like word, uh, worship in the word sessions. Now the uh, intercession sessions are the ones that I've always felt a little bit more uncomfortable with because those are the ones where people would be sharing prophetic words and things like that. And I just, I didn't feel as comfortable because I, I never like had that like assurance of what was from God and what wasn't. And you do have to kind of trust people. You have to trust that person with that gift of discernment to trust that they're hearing from God and that that's, that's that they're allowed you know, letting these people speak. Um, so, you know, it kind of depends on where you're coming from and how you're feeling. Um, but I think the prayer without ceasing mission is a beautiful thing. And I love it that they are continuing that. Uh, and honestly, spontaneous worship isn't necessarily inherently bad. Like some of my favorite musicians, like um, my favorite like worship album of all time is Enter the Worship Circle. And they do a lot of 
essentially like worship jam sessions where they play music, play a song, and then at the end of the song, they're just jamming out and spontaneously like worshiping. But those are like musicians where writing songs is what they do. Like, like, like some people like you think of like, this is not a spiritual thing. You think about like Taylor Swift or the Ed Sheeran's of the world, like that are songwriters, you know, like, like, like that is like, like words are just constantly flowing out of them. And if you're that kind of person, then harp and bowl spontaneous worship would be right up your alley because that would be something that's just like the, 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 the words and the lyrics and the, the thoughts about God are just constantly flowing out of you. So if you're that kind of person, then, you know, like I said, the, the Misty Edwards girl, um, then it would really, you know, be a gift for you. Um, like Rich Mullins did it. Um, there's a lot of like singers that I really love that do, like I said, worship jam sessions, spontaneous worship where they create beautiful poetry and songs to God in a spontaneous kind of session, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm not saying that's necessarily bad. It was just, like I said, for me personally, extremely stressful. Um, and like I said, there were a lot of parts to Harp and Bolt, at least in our church setting, that were dangerous and toxic. Um, and so we didn't feel comfortable continuing in that setting. So um, hopefully this made sense. <laughs> Um, but like I said, I will link Harp and Bowl and like the Harp and Bowl page for IHOP down below. And if you want to read about them, you can check them out um, and see if there's any in your area. Um, but uh, hopefully this made sense. And let me know in the comment section below, like what has been your experience with worship? Like are your, is your church primarily hymns? Um, are you more like contemporary kind of music? Um, are you more like low key or are you at a church, a big church where, like I said, you got the fog machines and the light show and everything? Um, or are you not at church at all right now and you're worshiping to songs like on your own in your privacy of your own home, that kind of thing? Just let me know. Um, and what your experience with it is. Um, and if you have any thoughts on harp and bowl worship and if you've experienced it, I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on it. So definitely let me know in the comment section below. Um, but yeah, I've got a long list of uh, that continues to grow of topics that I would like to talk with you guys about. So if you have any topics that you would like me to address or tell you my experiences or opinions on, um, then definitely let me know as well in the comment section. So if you guys like this particular video, of course, give me that thumbs up. Um, and if you'd like to follow along with me on this spiritual journey to discover our what and our why, then definitely hit the subscribe button as well. Um, and yeah, I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.